Hi, welcome back. In a previous video, we learned about NumPy operations. These are the topics that we covered in that video. If you haven't watched it yet or are interested in learning more about these concepts, I'd suggest you check out that video as well. In this video, we're going to be exploring pandas, series, and data frames. Now, if you're not familiar with pandas, then I've created a video where I explain the basics of this Python library. So you're welcome to check out that before you watch this video. In this video, we will be learning how to turn a Python list, NumPy array, and a dictionary into a panda series. We'll also be learning how to perform indexing and selection on panda series, creating a data frame from scratch, performing indexing and selection on a panda's data frame, and lastly, relating booleans and data frames. Let's jump right in. So we're going to go ahead and start by importing um, NumPy as NP, as we've been doing for the past few videos. Um, and this time, we're going to have a new import, which is pandas. So we're going to import pandas as pd. Um, OK, so in this video, we're kind of going to ex um, explore how we can turn um, Python lists, NumPy arrays, and dictionaries into um, pandas series. Um, and we're also going to explore some data frames with pandas. So um, we're going to create an, uh, a variable called Python list. And um, we're just going to set this equal to 1, 2, 3, which is a simple Python list. Next, we're going to create a NumPy array. So we're going to label this array and then say np.array. Um, and we're going to turn this Python list into a NumPy array. Then we're going to create a dictionary. Um, and if you're familiar with Python, you'll kind of know the syntax. But basically, we have a key and then kind of a value that goes with that key. So in this case, our keys are going to be x, y, z, which are just letters. And then our values are going to be um, the same as our list, so 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to match um, 1 to x, 2 to y, and 3 to z. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is create another Python list called letters. And you'll kind of see why I'm creating this now um, a little bit later. So these letters um, are just going to be the same x, y, and z. So um, once you've created this, we're going to um, uh, create our first panda series. So to do this, the syntax is pd.series with a capital S. That's pretty important. Um, and then um, parentheses and Python list. So this is turning our Python list, 1, 2, and 3, into a panda series. So as you can see, um, it's kind of in two columns. So the first column indicates the um, index, so 0, 1, and 2. And then the um, next column indicates the actual values that correspond to each um, index. So um, 1 corresponds with 0 index and so on. Now we're going to convert um, the NumPy array into a pandas series. And it actually outputs the same thing because our NumPy array is basically our list turned into array. OK, so now we're going to try customizing the labels. So when I say labels, I basically mean the indices. So when we say um, Python list comma letters, we're basically indicating that we want the data to be Python list and then the labels or the indices as letters, which is x, y, and z. That's a list. Um, and we can also replace Python list with the array and we'll get the exact same output. So um, next we're going to convert a, uh, our dictionary into a panda series and see what it outputs. So in this case, since we kind of have um, two different lists but merged together, it's going to output the same thing as we had last time. So x, y, z, one, two, three, um, where each key is each label. And then the um, value that corresponds with the key is going to be our data. So one, two, three. So um, same output for these past three uh, lines of code. So um, now we're going to we're going to uh, create a variable named ser, um, short for series. And we're going to um, set that equal to our dictionary. Um, that's now a panda series. And uh, this is kind of selection based on a series. So if we do square bracket zero, um, we're just going to get the value that corresponds with the zeroth index, which is one. Um, and we can also replace that with an X since it's labeled in this case. So basically the, the zero is the same as the X because there, it's, it's just talking about the zeroth index. Um, so now we're going to learn a little bit about data frames. 
So um, we can think of a data frame as basically a bunch of series objects put together. Um, and what's important to notice is that they all share the same index, which we'll see in just a moment. So we're gonna create a data frame from scratch um, and then perform some operations and selections using it. So the first thing what we're gonna do is create um, a random matrix using NumPy. So we're gonna call this rand um, and then say np.random.randn32. So it's gonna create um, a random array of three rows, two columns, and instead of being restricted to negative one to one, we're multiplying it times five to get a little bit of variance in there. Um, now I'm going to create uh, two new lists and you'll kind of see why I'm creating these in just a moment. But int is short for indices and then call is short for um, columns. So our indices list is gonna be one, two, three, and then our column list is gonna be A, B, C or sorry, just AB. Okay, so now we're gonna create um, a, a data frame. So this is the syntax for data frame. We have a variable set equal to PD dot data frame where D is capital and F is capital. Um, and in our um, parameters, we can do shift tap to see what this will need. So it looks like it needs um, data um, and then it needs an index. So for our data, we're gonna say rand, which is actually our, our um, two-dimensional array. Um, and this is in a matrix form, which uh, pandas is creating into a data frame. It has this nice little layout with some um, variances to black and white, um, and it, it has labeled our rows and it's labeled our columns. So now if we wanna specify what we want the um, rows and columns to be labeled, we say ind, comma call, um, where ind indicates the one, two, three, where it labels the rows, and then ab is the column names as our third parameter. Um, so now we can perform some selection and index indexing using our data frame. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, selecting columns. And this is pretty simple syntax. It's just df square bracket and then whatever column we want and it outputs that column for us. So it outputs um, just that column with all the rows associated with that. Um, if we want multiple columns, then we basically just include um, a square bracket and another square bracket um, inside of it and say the columns um, with a comma in between them. Um, so this is just a quick way to get multiple columns. Say we have like five columns and we just wanna get two of them, we can do it through um, this syntax right here. Um, so next we're gonna look at selecting rows. So selecting rows is a little bit more involved, um, but it's pretty simple. So we just use LOC and then do that same square bracket thing to get the actual row we want. Um, and in this, we have two columns, so it's just gonna output two things. Um, whatever's in uh, one for A, and then whatever's in one for B. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is see how we can um, use the index to um, obtain a value. So um, LOC without an I in front of it just needs um, the actual index name. Um, which is one in this case. But if we want the actual index, um, which is zero, that corresponds with index name one, then we input um, an I before the LOC. Okay, so now we're gonna look at how we can get um, a specific element. Cause so far we've been doing rows and columns, but if we um, have a comma in between, then we'll get um, a specific element. So it's row, comma, column. Um, and, and so one A gives us negative 3.8. Okay, so now we're gonna look at how we can um, get specific rows and columns. So this is gonna be using um, the same syntax as what we've been doing, where we say df.loc square bracket. Um, then we need to have something, comma, something. So row, comma, column. So we need to specify all the rows that we want. So pretend we want rows two and three. We just have another square bracket and indicate that. And then outside this um, square bracket, we have a comma and then indicate the column that we want, which is A. So it's gonna output um, rows two and three, column A, which is um, pretty specific. So um, now we're gonna look at how we can add a column. So we basically say DF square bracket and then put the name of the column inside and equal that to whatever we want the column to be. 
So in this case, I'm just doing um, another random array of uh, length three, and it has to be length three because there are three rows in this. Um, so it needs to follow that. Um, but yeah, and then we can drop it. We drop another um, column by doing uh, d um, df dot drop, uh, and then an open parentheses, and we can put some labels in there. Um, and what's also important is this axis right here. So this axis is talking about are we going to drop something in the um, rows or are we going to drop something in the columns? If we're going to drop something in the rows, if we're going to drop a row, then axis needs to be set equal to zero. If we're going to drop a column, then axis needs to be set equal to one in order to tell the machine that we want to drop a column. So that's why we've done this and now it's dropped um, column A. So um, our next thing is conditional selection. So this is basically saying, um, find out which values in DF is greater than one um, and replace that with the true. Um, find out which ones are not greater than one and those will become false. So whenever we have a conditional right here, it's gonna output a data frame that's filled with Boolean values. So now we're gonna look at how we can kind of turn this back into our actual data frame with actual values um, and how to kind of um, replace the false with uh, just undefined, basically. That's what the NAN means. So we, we did that by putting um, DF equal or greater than one, that conditional statement in the square bracket. Now next, what I did was I kind of said, um, specifically for the B column, what's greater than two? And that outputted um, a series because it's just, it's just a column, right? It's not comparing it to the whole data frame. Um, a, col um, a series with true and false depending on whether the value in B originally was um, greater than two or not. And this is converting it back into a data frame. But what it's actually doing here is it's taking out both of the falses. So rows two and three, it actually had false for um, is, is a value in B greater than two. And because it had false, it had to take those two, um, those two rows out. So it's left with just a one. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is kind of see how we can use logical operators with um, conditional statements and data frames. So for logical operators, those are um, and and or, um, we basically need df square bracket and inside the square bracket we're going to have open parentheses and then either an and or an or separating the two um, statements. In the first one I'm just going to um, insert what we already have so we're going to check for um, column b whatever is greater than two. Then in the next one I'm going to check um, c is greater than uh, let's say 0.7. Um, and in this case we can actually see how um, because, so the first statement kind of filters it down to line one, as we saw before. And the second line, there are actually no values that are greater than um, 0.7 or 0.5. And so it doesn't output anything. Um, well, it, it's a blank data frame because nothing is able to fit both those conditions. Um, if we change this to zero, it doesn't work either, right? So we want to find something in one. Um, just row one, because we know that the first condition already filters it down. Um, and so we can try negative two, and yeah, that outputs something because we have um, a, a value in C in one that's, um, that's greater than negative two. Um, okay, so that was uh, pretty much it. So as just a quick review of what we've done here, um, we imported pandas, which is new. Then we started creating Python lists, NumPy arrays, and dictionaries into pandas series. Um, that was uh, what we did in the beginning. Um, then we went on to kind of selecting, um, doing some indexing and selection on um, the series. Then we looked at data frames. Um, we saw how we could perform some selection on that as well. Um, and then finally, we got to um, conditionals um, and we reviewed how we can kind of relate the booleans to data frames, how we can kind of go back and forth. Well, that's it for now. If you've enjoyed the content in this video, make sure to give it a like and comment down below any questions you may have. I've also included a little activity in the description box that relates to the skills we learned in this video, so I welcome you to try that out as well. 
If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos that'll help you on your journey towards mastering artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.